Hi guys, it's my face story here and today I am talking to you about my relapse with Accutane or otherwise known as Roaccutane, Isotretinoin, etc, etc, etc. Maybe I should start off by saying that this is not a video that I ever thought I would have to make. I thought that Accutane was my like cure-all. I thought I would take it one six month month course for 60 milligrams a day and then that I would never ever 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 have to think about cystic acne ever again because all my friends told me you know how well it worked for them and success stories I read online and I'm still positive about it I mean it did do a really good job but I'm definitely not 100% clear and my acne did come back after Accutane which based on like different research like studies and things that I've read it comes back for a lot of people like definitely more than the 15% that they say I've read that it can come back for up to depending on like certain trial groups up to like 60% of people and that also depends on what you define as a relapse because some people think that one or two pimples isn't a relapse like if you have severe acne like I wouldn't think that that's a relapse but other people who maybe only have like moderate acne might think like anything at all is a relapse. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So that depends. And then it also, from what I've read, depends on if you are a male or female because of your hormones. Um, and it depends on your age, again, because of your hormones. <laughs> Um, because as you age, you know, your hormones d definitely change so you could take it when you're younger and you could stay clear for a couple years and then it could come back as you get older and your hormones change. Um, also depends on like your weight if you took the accurate amount of dosage of Accutane um, t like with your weight. I think another thing is just it doesn't work for some people like it does obviously work pretty well but for some people it just your acne keeps coming back it just does not work so and I think I'm definitely in the hormonal kind of group even though you know I haven't had any changes in my hormones per se I've been on the same birth control for like years and years and years so um, I definitely feel like I'm in the hormonal group so what I want to talk to you guys about is what's been helping me since I did relapse after Accutane and by relapse I mean I got assist here assist here 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 and here almost all at the same time i had probably like five at once and i didn't have any cystic spots for about a year and i remember the first one right here and i was just like oh it's just one like it's gonna be fine i'm not worried about it at all whatever you know what i mean i was like oh it's fine and then after that it was just like every other week like i kept getting a new one and a new one and a new one and a new one i was like dude what is going on so the first thing I did that really, really helped me was cutting out dairy because I've heard that from so many people and I did not want to change my ways. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. Like, there's no way. Like, it's just dairy. Like, everyone drinks it. There's no way. But literally, as soon as I cut out dairy, um, just my face purged at first and then completely cleared up. And I didn't get I had any more cysts. And I still haven't unless... I accidentally eat dairy, which I think did happen because I got one. But besides that, <laughs> I haven't gotten any since I cut out dairy. And I'm not over exaggerating, like I'm not kidding. Like, and by dairy, I mean anything that is a byproduct of a cow's milk. So obviously cow's milk, um, cream cheese, butter, cheese, none of that, zero. And the reason that can affect, affect affect acne sufferers is because um, your body might have an inability to process that hormone or it might throw your hormones off balance which in turn causes like inflammation within your body or your body is rejecting it and it comes out in the form of cystic acne like how some people have a lactose intolerance and you know it comes out like that for acne sufferers it can come out like on your face which is kind of crazy to think about um, so that was one thing that really did help me. I realized after that um, I was still getting like little pimples here and there every now and then especially like it's always been this half of my face like never like, my forehead's always clear. It's never been my forehead always this half of my face. Um, so I started thinking about just like more about you know my body and how I felt and I know that sounds kind of like hippy dippy but whatever. And I was like, you know, I feel tired all the time. Ever since I can remember, I just, every single day I feel tired. Like, I don't know how people get through the day. I don't know how much caffeine I drink, you know. So I cut out all caffeine. 
um, and that helped as well. And then I was like, I feel achy too. And so I started researching, you know, tiredness, achiness, and I came across chronic inflammation. I was like, I think that I could definitely have this because I'm always achy, I'm always tired, and chronic inflammation is achiness, tiredness, and guess what else? Acne. Yes, like cystic acne because it's a response like that your whole body is inflamed. It's basically when your body goes haywire and it can come out in the form of cystic acne. I was like, okay, what can I do to control this or like what is going to help this? So I started eating a non-inflammatory diet or foods that help with inflammation. Um, and there's so many different foods that you can eat that help with inflammation. I mean, you can honestly just Google and find like a whole list, but like especially like different herbs and spices um, that help with inflammation, like turmeric is a good example of one of them. Um, a lot of people use a face mask, but they eat it as well. Um, I started eating like coconut oil because it's supposed to balance your hormones. Even though a study just came out that says coconut oil isn't good for you, I'm still gonna keep eating it because I think that it's good for me and my body does like it, so there's that. Um, start eating more avocados because those are good for balancing your hormones. Basically, anything to balance my hormones and um, not trigger inflammation, like low, low inflammation diet. And then from there, I started researching about um, like foods with a low GI. So a low GI is basically a low glycemic index. And what the glycemic index measures is basically how much a food is going to spike your blood sugar or your insulin levels. So something like white bread, uh, white rice, and you know, processed carbs and refined sugar is going to have a high GI. And then things that are like full of fiber and that are like fresh, like fresh vegetables and fruits are gonna have a low GI. Um, so I cut out basically all refined carbohydrates. Like I don't eat white rice or white bread or like anything like that anymore. Um, and I eat very, very, very little sugar. Um, and that has honestly helped me so much. Like changing my diet to a low glycemic index diet has helped me so, so much. Um, and I actually have a list of foods that I can like share that I've basically been eating. Um, basically I just eat like vegetables and protein and that's it. Obviously, I'm not perfect, so like I do cheat sometimes, like especially if I'm going out with friends and like I can't find anything. I never ever cheat on dairy or like um, carbs or anything like that. But you know, sometimes it's hard to go out and find like the thing that you want to eat. But as far as that goes, like whatever, it's like one time, so just bounce back into your diet the next day. You know what I mean? Like, don't make it a habit, but it's just one time, and that's fine. Like, it's fine. When food has a high glycemic index level, it spikes your blood sugar, and the blood sugar spike can cause a hyperinsulin response, and that response actually <laughs> can trigger um, either inflammation or a hormonal fluctuation, which can cause cystic acne. So that's why I stay away from the high GI foods. And low GI foods don't do that, you know, and a lot of them actually com combat inflammation, which can help with, you know, your complexion and everything. Low GI foods keep blood sugar levels, like, consistent. Um, so basically, again, just to recap, I don't eat, eat anything that's like highly processed or refined carbohydrates or sugar. Like I try to stay away from like things that are fried or greasy um, or super sweet. So I don't eat buttermilk cheese. I don't eat french fries or chicken or other fried foods. <laughs> and then obviously I'm not eating anything that's like coffee creamer, margarine or anything else that has trans fat. So here's some of the things I wrote down that I have been eating. I have been eating basically beans, extra virgin olive oil, eggs, garlic, rosemary, bone broth. Haven't tried beets yet, but they're supposed to be really good. Um, basically like the darkest green leafy vegetables you can find. So I really love kale and I like spinach, but I'm recently not sure if spinach breaks me out or not. So I am staying away from it a little bit. Uh, bok choy, uh, celery, broccoli, blueberries, salmon, you want like uh, fatty fish, walnuts, chia seeds. I eat chia seeds like every day. Like I just put them in, I, you can put them in drinks too. Sometimes I put them in my matcha, which is delicious. Um, or I'll put them in my kombucha, uh, or I'll put them in my overnight oats. 
Um, coconut oil, like I said earlier, will help to balance your hormones. Flax seeds, turmeric, which helps with inflammation. Cinnamon actually helps to keep your blood sugar levels consistent. Um, ginger, which also helps with like your stomach and stomach issues. And whole grains, high in fiber, like oats, and obviously green tea. I love green tea. Green tea is good for your complexion. It's good for um, stabilizing your hormone levels, all that good stuff. And so yeah, I did start drinking caffeine again, not coffee. I think coffee is not good for me. I drink green tea and matcha, and that basically, I feel like I don't crash. Like I have energy all day long, and it's a good, consistent energy. And yeah, I really like it. I feel way better. Um, I mean, before I would just be, like I said, so tired and achy all the time, and now I like, can't even imagine what that, that's like. I have so much energy, I just wanna be like, up all day doing stuff and I don't go to bed until like super late which is weird I used to always go to bed at like 9 or 10 <laughs> and then sleep until like 9 or 10 but now I don't go to bed until like 1 or 2 a.m. and then I wake up at like 7 <laughs> so yeah I do I feel like way better so if you are acne prone you're going to have to try different methods than someone who is not acne prone obviously to either um, get rid of or just to control or manage your acne, your condition. Um, so yeah, you guys, that was short and sweet, the version of Maccutane Relapse and what I've been doing since then and what has helped me the most. In addition to that, I've been working out, I've been running probably three to four times a week as often as I can, a couple miles each time. Um, and that's helped with my energy levels too, like tremendously and helped with, I think, keeping my skin clear because when you run you sweat and it's like a detox for your body from the inside out all right guys thank you so much for listening and i hope this was helpful and i will see you soon thanks bye